for Sandy, like, First Nation? Coordinator. Coordinator? Yeah. That's what you said? It's Education Coordinator. Coordinator, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so maybe if you just want to describe um, what your role is as the Education Coordinator? My role is um, I look after the Learning Center and the Christian School and the uh, Elementary School. And uh, the elders and the anti-bully workers. So I have uh, all those people that I look after. And I'm involved with uh, immersion too, the cultural learning. So that's what I'm doing. From uh, I look after the elementary K-4 to uh, grade 6, both for the, um, um, the English courses, you know, the what is required for in Ontario. That's what uh, it's combined with uh, kindergarten to grade 6 at elementary. And then and, uh, we have K-4 to grade 5 immersion classes. Yeah. Okay. So what is the age range for the students that go to the school? Uh, from four, four-year-olds mm -hmm. to uh, 12, I would say, with mm -hmm. the elementary school. Nice. Yeah. And for that, what's kind of the aim of the programming at the elementary school? So what do you want the youth to leave with as they, mm -hmm. as they enter junior high? We, well, they offer the junk math program and the literacy program and uh, and plus we have that uh, that introduction to their um, to their identity with uh, who they are. So when you're uh, talking about programming for for youth identity what kind of programs do you have for for that that are happening at the elementary? For their identity? Yeah, or just like oh, the yeah. culture. We have uh, stuff that they do, like we have the cultural uh, uh, land-based learning where they go on the land. They uh, either go ice fishing, uh, rabbit snaring, um, just to go walk around the trails near the school. Um, just to see, you know, what kind of animals are there and all that. What they do, and plus we have elders that give the guidance for the teachers and the students there. If they have any questions, they can ask an elder regarding uh, land-based learning. Yeah. So do the elders go out with them? Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. they, uh, they uh, go fishing too shoreline fishing and um, ice fishing and over the with the Christmas coming up they have like well we have our Christmas parade too and then we have a variety of uh, sports that we do here too they, they have hockey and they look forward to going to Dryden too in February mm -hmm. so that's part of their you know their learning too mm -hmm. that we find so yeah. Um, and then, so you're mentioning there's the language immersion from K to five. Mm -hmm. um, how is how's that going? What's their favorite parts of that program? Oh, that uh, they have um, different resources that they can use, and they have um, um, their Slavic chart that they go by, and uh, it helps the children learn, uh, you know, words that uh, they can say like mother, you know, the mama and the father and it's displayed on the walls. So like if you go to the elementary school, you'll see it in the classrooms. And we have a one wing all immersion, mm -hmm. uh, grade one, two, three. And then the, there's the other classes mm -hmm. then, but this one wing is all immersion. Now, what do you think the uh, the importance is of having the the land based learning and the and the language? Do those like come together at all when they're yeah babies? yeah I I find that it helps because when you're out on the land, mm -hmm. and then you have you have an elder there with you, 
and then the elder talks in their na native language, and then it brings that that interaction and to get in touch with their learning with the, their native native language, and you know it is who they are. It has that that root, that foundation, that uh, for their for their language, and then their culture is stronger. That I find. In any First Nations, yeah. that's what uh, how I feel about the native language. <laughs> yeah. And how long has the the language program and the land based program stuff been happening in the school since it started? Or no, before immersion started, there was already land based uh, training, and then we had a a teacher that would come in and out of the classroom to teach native language. Yeah. Did you see it? Was the difference that you saw yeah. in the students? Like, yeah, there is a difference after the immersion came out, mm -hmm. like um, more interaction and more more students learning about their their language and uh, and uh, students can sing to O Canada in their native language, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Awesome, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so. Um, and then, have you seen if? Um, throughout the programming, have you seen like community members get involved and families get more involved with the programming, seeing that it reflects the culture a little bit more? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we had a uh, over the summer we had um, adults coming into the learning center, or even young people to continue on with their uh, involvement with uh, native language. Even the nurses were. We're joining in the classroom, so yeah, yeah, they had fun learning about the native language, the, the native language, mm -hmm. by our uh, local uh, nurses that come here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so everybody is uh, learning and enjoying. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, from your perspective, what is Indigenous education? Well, to me, um. It all started from way back with our uh, with our grandparents, our parents. Like m some of them were um, taken to go to residential school, but um, from that, I guess uh, we learned uh, that uh, education does play a role in our lives. Like we need it. I mean, everybody needs education, so, and then part of the indigenous, uh, being indigenous is, uh, it reflects who you are, you know, it reflects us as First Nations, what, what we bring in to our young people, and that's, and that I think is very important, you know, to be role models and for the benefit of our young people, our children. It's, uh, and to continue on with the education and plus learning about who they are too. Having that language and that knowledge of who they are, that it, it makes a big impact of being uh, a First Nations. Yeah, that's what I, what I think. <laughs> so where do you see Indigenous education in the next 10 years, maybe in the community itself, but mm -hmm. then also kind of on the bigger picture, so kind of a two-part question. Mm -hmm. I guess this is where we need our elders and our resources to make our, um, our native language and cultural uh, to be uh, um, continued, I guess, by our young people. And uh, just to pass along, I guess, from what we learned and then what they can carry on for the next 10 years or the next 20 years to, so that they can pass it along to, to their uh, children too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you think about Indigenous education maybe in like the movement mm -hmm. of, of just like keeping it going, mm -hmm. um, what would you say to people who are thinking about starting an Indigenous education in their in their school or something mm -hmm. like that? Well, we need a lot of storytelling too. We need mm -hmm. storytellers, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we need our elders to get more involved. We do have our elders that are involved in the education here, but the more we we have, you know, it will be it would make an impact on the young people. They'll see that it is really important of who they are and it's part of their learning. Yeah.